We are nearing the cutoff for that Meanwhile Sononi video submissions that are due by Tuesday. Which reminds me, Blade, you sending one in? Why do y'all keep expecting me to drink? Whoa, whoa, look, look easy there, didn't you? Taunt, space flies back during no no November last year? And? Well, he's dead now, so at least do it for space flies. Nah, screw that hydrated pal of simp. You ain't gonna do him like that. Look, well, at least, what are you getting for my birthday then? Hey, listen now. I got you that book. Oh, th this is it? A week ahead of time. Look at this man being unappreciative. Just tell me you didn't get me anything without telling me you didn't get anything. <laughs> it's Aspol's Galore this week with all the lead-ups to the final form actually being a berserker form. And we're going all in Naruto style. So get those Kage no Bunshin Jutsus ready as we go all in on this week's Geats. So although last week, Jean warned Beraba and Kekera about the season finale, they aren't quick to give up that vision driver yet. They got one last minute wish. Two of them. Zoom and enhance. I, uh, I got nothing. So now that we are done with the game, Sarah should be the clear winner, right? Nah. Tie game since Buffa was out there hustling. This is a sudden death round of Sara v. Azuma. Yeah, that, that, that's completely fair. Remember, Kuhn? Seems like that guy just shows up sparingly, but he's here to give Neon information that he somehow got. How'd he get that information, though? Somehow. I don't know, we don't see this man, but yes, he knows that whatever wishes they've got, they aren't going to get granted. So the DGP is just a giant waste of time, like most of the stuff in this show. So of course, the Queen of Time Waste from the Disaster Arc informs the Crown Prince of Elves, which stands for Lack of Character Growth, Kewa, and Newcomer Sarah, who's about to be a waste of time addition as well. All this when Buffa attacks. That's right, our sudden game of sudden death seems to be going in effect. With taking the saw to the trio, what's this weird camera cut? Actually, let's take a look at that again in full screen. Looks like Sarah's suit actress slipped up on the opening to that door. Ah, the power of jump cuts. Ain't that right, Zio? Shut up, huh? I don't know why Sarah thinks it's a good idea to run into the bus, but clearly, Buffa's got her cornered. Tycoon comes in with a save and saving people talk! But, did you forget? You're like Mr. Satan to Buffa Cell. Get the hell out of here with that weak shit! Sarah, you're next! Getting that penetration from the weir. Ooh! Double penetration! We eating good this week, huh? Grabbing those ID cores while giving his monologue. Those girls are retired. Now that Kayla's gotten those ID cores, it's time to cut away. That's right, Gene's got those vision drivers for near him, but he's not the only one getting in the sheets because Ace never left them. Going off to the goddess of creation herself, Suiru not letting this disrespect fly, especially since he knows Mitsume has no will of her own anymore. So let's just wish for a world in which Ace doesn't ex- Oh my god, what, what's your excuse now? Oh, she's, she's out of juice and needs to get tossed out. You think Ace will just take the- Oh yeah, he's got OP powers. OP powers or not, he doesn't really just use them to kill Ace outright. So, I don't, I don't know why. Hey, remember that one episode where they told us the origin of Ace's mother and how Ace came to be? Well, they're acting like we forgot because here's Win with the deeds. Turns out Ace's dad was a previous desire god. But instead of gold, he wants some of that future no Usi. But since Mitsume's got no Usi, she wished really, really hard for three days and three nights until she got Ace out of that Uzi. You're getting quite ahead of yourself there, Zio. There's a whole fight in between with Tycoon and Buffa. Whole fight? What do you mean? He punches this guy and slams him against the bus. All while Kekera and Beroba 
Lick some lollipops. Hey, you, you, you can't do that. You took my job. What you gonna do, cry about it, Blade? Look, all those bets that you did two weeks ago, well, you gotta yeah, bring that up. none of those really happened. So you can just take that L bigger than Kawa is currently. That's what I thought. So, as Buffa reaches for that ca- I mean ID core, Kawa tries to hold him off. Since, as a human and not transform, he can totally do something to OP McBaggins here. Giving an impassioned speech about how he needs to end things and have the goddess atone, Kawa's time is up. Until Wynn shows up with those earlier deeds. All. Oh, also, the games are still tied. So, Wynn gives the earlier information out to the cast, but makes Kawa double think about his actions since the goddess didn't do shit. It was all Suidu using her. The goddess is laid out for all to see her crumble, and Ace makes his return to get that mother. But, just as soon as he shows up, Niram is sent out as Suidu's lapdog. Laid? Well, it's time for me to continue the commentating train. Wires ready, live! With the action of Laser Boost and Gazer going down Garo style, falling down from height. Gazer's got some bad aim, while Angular, since Gaze, is able to one punch boost, knocking Gazer down to the ground. Gaze with the aggression, but Gazer's collected it and kicks the laser right off him. But wait. We've got gravity powers! That doesn't stop Gazer though, since he's got those funnels! But the goddess is crying, knocking Ace out of focus with a piece of his mom hitting the ground. His emotions unlock his full Gene Churiki asshole powers! We've gone full Naruto, but now Ace is able to create time warps in space time. With this episode of Geats, we get the ass pull of a form with the debut of Boost Mark III. And with that, let's talk forms. They really went budget this time, I guess. Since they took the Boost Mark I and repainted it with white and added a white undersuit. It's okay as far as repaint goes, but I still prefer the original color scheme of Boost. Though, the lines that accent the form remind me a bit of Gundam Unicorn. I would have preferred if they went a little bit extra and made the red accents layered under the white to make it look like it has a bit more depth. Otherwise, it's alright. But, Boost Mark 2 still looks better. Rating time! It really seems like Ace's defying logic, the game's rules, and the concept of the season as a whole. It's... it's an episode. It's at least better than last week, but that's not saying much. So, this one's just gonna be getting... a C. I'm curious to what Beroba and Kekera actually wish for, though I wouldn't doubt that it might have something to do with their supported players and might lend them the buckles needed for the future upgrades. Right? Right? Though I wonder if their last second wishes are what dried up Mitsume's well prior to Suiru trying to get his wish. What's funny is that we now know how Mitsume awakened her powers, and it seems to be tied into the Navigator forming a relationship with a human. If that's the case, then Sumiri's own interactions with Ace might have been what awakened her. But it seems a little counterintuitive that they even made that a rule, but technically needed it to happen again if they wanted to keep the game running. So yeah, a lot of this just really isn't making any sense. Though it might be that this isn't just limited to navigators, but just future people in general. Meaning that maybe Kuhn could start getting asshole wish abilities from his own interactions with Neon. It could be a future explainer for how they managed to bring back her ID core even though it was shattered by Buffa this week. Since we do know that if Buffa does shatter an ID core, then those guys are just done. They're out. They can never be a writer again. But of course, Ace now has time space warping manipula- you know what, whatever. Either way, look, this could just be one of the many explainers to how Neon ends up rejoining the game eventually. But damn, 
Sarah came and went that quick when it came to being a writer. Just as she gained her resolve last week. It's the constant flow on how this show builds someone up just to knock them back down the following week. Honestly, when the rock from the goddess of creation fell, I thought that that would create the buckle for Boost Mark III, but I was wrong in that assumption. But this ability to just manifest a buckle from enough raw emotion is an asshole of a dramatic degree and I hate the concept. At least previously, the asshole was done from various wishes of past incarnations. But this time, it was a self-induced emotional draw that just feels like they were making Ace himself a deus ex machina. Now look, the previous episode, they had a slight tease that Ace is evolving. When Buffa got hit by Archimedal, it's almost as if Ace himself willed his fever buckle to make him go into Monstar form. But going from a simple mind flick to full on manifestation is just a bit too sudden. Especially since this power seems to bend and warp the space time around him. It's looking to be far too broken. But I guess they're going to need that for Suedu, which is for some stupid reason appears to be able to one shot Ace, but keeps having to have others take him down for him. You know what this show is lacking a lot of? Stakes. Big, meaty stakes, because all these characters just find their way back. The suspense of Neon getting beat by Buffa this week? Gone, because she's in the preview for next week's episode. I don't know about y'all, but Geats is really fumbling the ball, so we'll have to see how things go from here and see if they manage to stick the landing. But otherwise, we're just gonna keep going on this ride and see where it stops. So, what did you think about this week's Geats? Neon and Sarah's early retirement. What Beroba and Kekira's wish was. And, how soon will Sumeri start using them full-on goddess powers? Anyway, that's it for me. Gaze on that glaze, Geats spread on Buffa's cheeks. And I will see you all next time. Bye.